It's a pleasure to be here today. And <clears throat> I'd like to apologize for my voice. It's at the end of the semester, and so I've lost it. <laughs> but I'll do my best to speak softly and carefully. Um, so as Duane was mentioning, we've just started our project to help you all develop a survey that will understand what people know, what people care about, and what people are currently doing in the five county region. And I know you're looking just at Brevard, so I would assume that we'll be able to subdivide the data that come out and look by county so that you'll have some answers as well. Um, but I can provide sort of a general overview that will help introduce the other speakers this morning. And one is to, rem to remind ourselves that education is a really broad field. Um, we're not just talking about what children learn in school, although a K-12 program is one important piece of an education suite of possibilities. It's, it's handy to think about school kids because they're contained, they're captive, there's one message that can go out and catch them <laughs> while, they're still, while they're still in school. By the time people are adults, of course, there's fewer opportunities for capturing them in an educational program. However, there are still those opportunities through civic organizations, through faith-based organizations, through NGOs and other organizations that work with adults, they still can get a message out and educate folks. And then, of course, there's also the media as well. These education programs often have either a broad reach, saying we're gonna blanket the region with this message, or a very narrow, tar targeted focus, saying people who live here need to know this information, or people who are members of this organization need, are, are gonna be best able to understand and hear and do something, or maybe visitors to a particular location. So there's all sorts of different ways people subdivide the general public into a targeted audience that, for which they can design a specific message. And then what is it that they should say? And there's all sorts of things that are important to say. <clears throat> I think we're information processing organisms. We do things that make sense to us. And so people need to understand a lot about the Indian River Lagoon, the watershed, how the system is connected, in order to connect those dots to understand how their behavior miles away from the lagoon itself can still contribute to the health of the lagoon. Um, so, so understanding basic information is important. It's not glitzy, it's not as fun as going fishing, it may be difficult to accomplish, but it's still essential. <clears throat> Certainly opportunities to engage are another piece of what's important. Once they understand, once they're interested, once they're connected, they need to be able to take some meaningful action. They need to be able to do something. Whether that's fishing or picnicking or camping or making an oyster mat or whatever it is, they need to be able to do something. And then, of course, there's being reminded about what they can do in their own everyday life that will make a difference. If it's picking up their dog poop or if it's how they deal with their yard, those are all critical things that they can do. So the kinds of things that might improve our success when it comes to an education program <clears throat> are that we need to create interest. Sometimes that's feeding off of initial curiosity, sometimes it's reminding people that they really are curious about things that they don't think about all the time. It may not be the most important thing on everybody else's mind, even though it's the most important thing on yours. Um, so reminding people about the things they do care about, <clears throat> matching their values and needs. A lot of people that we talk to think that People just need to get to the lagoon. It's the people who are fishing every day, the people who are picnicking and hiking on the shore. Those are the people who care. So then the logic would go, we need to get almost two million people to visit the lagoon every day. And that may not be feasible, but I don't even know that it's necessary. <coughs> I think a lot of people care about polar bears and penguins who have never been to either end of the planet. A lot of people care about climate change even though they don't recognize an increase in temperature. They may not be experiencing it, but they still feel some degree of responsibility. They still know enough to connect those dots so that they understand how what they do makes a difference, and they care. They care about a variety of things, and so figuring out what they care about and what triggers their sense of value and responsibility is one 
piece toward designing an effective message. And then following it with a meaningful thing for them to do, an opportunity to engage. We need to remove the barriers and make it easy for people. <clears throat> and I also think we're social organisms. It's important for people to believe they're part of a community, that they're not out there on a limb on their own, but there's other people with them. And the more we can build a community toward change, the more effective it'll be. So the research can tell us that the action is gonna be more likely when people have understanding, when they can connect those dots, when they understand the big picture, when they have commitment and care and concern. Now, of course, everybody will have different things that they're committed and care about and concerned about, but they need to have something. They need to be part of a social community to know they're not alone. And they need to feel that they're needed. People don't want to waste their time. People need to believe that their actions matter. So there's a variety of things that these programs can do. They can make it fun. They can engage youth and family in visiting, in helping, in doing things in the lagoon or in lagoon simulated environments like the zoo has. We can provide information that answers those questions that people have. At least for adults, when we're talking about specific behaviors that people can do, we can remove those barriers, maybe even offer incentives. Incentives don't have to be money. Incentives can be rewards, they can be um, recognition status, they can be badges and patches, they can be your name in the newspaper because you're participated. There can be all sorts of things that people will find are a pat on the back. We can celebrate the sort of people who are doing it now, the early adopters, the people who are out there at the front lines making a difference. We can also provide feedback. People need to know their, their, their actions matter, but they also need to know that they're making a difference. So the more we can loop back around to say, this is what we're accomplishing, and this is how much you're doing, and this is what matters, not only will those people feel like they're doing the right thing, but other people will say, oh, why I should be doing that too. And you're, this is a long-term game. So the fact that people might do something now doesn't mean they're done. <laughs> so um, creating a strategy that works for the long term is probably going to be helpful. I think the good news for the Indian River Lagoon is that there's a lot of organizations out there who are willing to step up, as was just mentioned. They're, they're working together, well, they're, they're working. We want them to work together to create these messages that will be effective. I think as long as the messages aren't conflicting, it's really helpful for there to be repetition in the system and for people to hear it from multiple sources. <clears throat> There's a guy up in New England that talks about surround sound and how important that is for people to hear the message from a lot of different folks. I think it's also important because people will trust and respect certain messengers more than others, and so they might go get their information from this organization even though everybody else is saying it too, but they, that's who they trust, so that's where they go. I think there's room for lots of niches in the system of messages, and so that'll be important. I also mentioned that it's important to match the message with the audience and what they care about. That's not something we know instinctively, that's something we do research to find out about. I'm about done. No, okay. I'm no, hoping don't. somebody's keeping time. <laughs> I think Dwayne. You are keeping time. Is okay, great. Thank you. Um, and so that's part of what we're starting with. We're not assuming that everybody cares about the same thing. We're not assuming we know what everybody cares about. And that's why we're doing focus groups. We're doing interviews. We're pilot test. We're developing a survey and pilot testing it extensively before we ever roll out with the survey. Because one thing about a survey is it has to be perfect, right? Don't get a second chance. <laughs> you mail it out, and that's it. <laughs> and so we have to know that it's a really good survey, that the questions we're at asking are the ones people are reading and hearing and responding to, and that we know what their answers mean to them. And so it's a long process, and we don't have the answers yet. But we hope to have some of those answers in the future. I, that's all. I was going to say. But do we have any questions of clarification? Yes, John. I have a comment. Uh, I think you're leaving money on the table. I didn't see mentioned here what is the one of the major themes in K through 12 education countrywide and in Brevard Public Schools, I would assume the other school districts. And that's STEM, which is probably better called STEAM because it's nice to have the arts in it too. 
I think there's an opportunity that perhaps you could push or Duane or someone for the school districts to take their STEM slant STEAM programs and develop a lagoon focus. We got FIT, FIT consultants, uh, Harbor Branch, expertise in the community, the zoo, nonprofit organizations that would be of great help. And if you get the kids thinking about lagoon studies and doing lagoon studies, then they find their way at home at dinnertime conversations, affecting the behavioral change that, uh, that Dr. DeFries mentioned. I think STEM and STEAM is something that needs to be joined at the hip with lagoon studies, at least in Brevard County, I like to see it up and down the river. Mm -hmm. I agree. I had Thank a you. question too. Yes. I was kind of curious relative to your survey. Uh, do you have a target audience who you're gonna send it out to? And how? what do you expect on a response rate? Yeah, um, the, we did a recent survey of coastal residents where there are sea turtle beaches and we are getting almost a 40% response rate. Oh. Because it's, you don't just send it out. First of all, you send out a postcard that says you've been selected to be part of the course. <laughs> and then you send out the survey and you make it as clear and as easy and as possible to complete as possible. And then you send out a reminder. If we've already gotten it, thank you very much. If we haven't gotten it, please send it in. And then you send another reminder. And then you send another survey again, saying we haven't gotten it yet, but we know you want to fill this out. And so you keep pestering people till they finally send it in. There is a percentage of people who call up and say, stop pestering me. And so that's a problem. But um, after that fifth postcard, we're done. <laughs> postcard, wow, okay, John. So this is all done with mail and paper? Because like the FWC stuff, is all done online. Yeah, there's a variety of different ways to do it. Um, it depends on who you want to reach. And at this point in time, I don't have access to email addresses that blanket the, the county. It may be that the county has those. And so it's possible to partnership with somebody that, that has that. The, if we want to do a random survey of the population, the best source is the tax rolls, and then you only get people who own property, so that's not really everybody. Um, and so it's a problem. You're, you're only as good as, as your population database is. And <laughs> it'll probably be in English, so then you're only as good as the English-speaking population database. Okay, Terry. Just quickly, your survey responses are anonymous. Yes. They're reported anonymously. We, we compile the data together so that there's no individual identified in the responses. This, this notion of follow-up and quit pestering me if I've already done it, but you don't know that I've done it because it's in a black hole or, you know, it's right. unattributed. Okay. I was just going to make a comment that most municipalities send out some kind of a water bill of some type. And just knowing that that is a source of being able to reach individual members that are in municipalities. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. that, thank you. That well, could be a useful a opportunity. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, we weren't going to take questions from the audience, but you're on the I panel. If you come. make a point of clarification. It has to be so captured by the mic. This contract. Mm -hmm. Uh, this contract is going to develop a survey. Could you speak into the microphone because uh, we've Sorry, got a This contract is going to develop viewership. the survey and then test the survey. And so we'll be coming back to you with the results of this contract to have the discussion that you are actually beginning to have already about how do you actually distribute a survey through five counties. And so that is not part of the scope of work mm -hmm. with this particular phase but it will be the next step where we come back to you all as well as the partners and say how do we best, you know, with Dr. Monroe's guidance in a second phase, actually deliver this survey to get those large-scale results. 